With a load of iron ore, 26,000 tons more than the Edmund Fitzgerald wagon. Dixie Bean Crew was a born to be judged when the gales in November got the night. Was afraid of the American side coming back from the middle of this country. Big freighter scum, it was better than most. With the crew in good, kept it well seasoned. The corn came late and the breakfast had to wait. The waves broke all of the railing. What's up, guys? Welcome to tonight's episode of Smallmouth Crush. It is July 31st, the day before August, and a uh, nice little cold front came through. Fishing seems to be a little hit and miss across the Northeast, and let's bring Travis on. That was the worst intro I've ever seen in my life. Should we give him another shot? Because that was pathetic. Hey, guys, it's July 31st, the day before August 1st. Fishing has been really tough. <laughs> Come on, man. Man. You want me to try again? No, screw it. You wrecked it. Good. Um, welcome, everybody. Epic Eric. Uh, JP is filling in for Epic Eric, who is at the fair this evening. He's going to try to make it. However, we don't probably have that much time. This can be a real short but very informational live stream tonight um i'm tired i'm beat i'm on the verge of death i'm going through a uh i have a post-spawn funk i'm feeling the post-spawn funk you know what i mean jp you ever spawn so much that you're just in a funk afterwards <clears throat> no no <laughs> i'm always ready to go <laughs> <laughs> we <laughs> we um we got a special guest tonight. Um, Jody's going to be joining us. He won the Bassmaster Open on the St. Lawrence River. What was it, last week now? Yeah. It's uh, It was an epic, epic tournament, and we're going to learn a little bit about that. And so we're not going to keep you up too late tonight. Honestly, I am fragile right now. I'm trembling. I got the shakes. You know what might help? Maybe a Founders, huh? Let's crack open a Founders, JP. We have some guide trips tomorrow, JP. Mm-hmm. Who cares about your condition? We get three hours or more. Come on, M. Jones. <laughs> oh, man. Um, Where are you at? You're at, J at our buddy John's house. Or undisclosed yeah, location. Here. I'm not sure. It's a disclosed location in Shimo, New York. Just rolled into town here. Looking forward to getting some guys on some fish the next couple of days. Uh, wish I brought a pair of sweatpants. It's about 50 degrees up here. It was about 80 when I left Albany. But uh, definitely a big front coming through. Doesn't look like it's going to get warm again for like two weeks. It's going to be like what? mid mid 70s for the wow. next 14 days. That's interesting. That's really interesting. Um, yeah, it's been a pretty pleasant July. And now, you know, I, I expected uh, it was definitely a little cooler this morning um, in the last couple of days up here. But the fish have been elusive, JP. Hmm. I can bring you to a bunch. They still don't want to open their mouths. <laughs> still just hanging out, not eating, huh? Well, we, we got to cover a lot of water. I covered so much water today. I, uh, 
I pretty much ran all my A stuff offshore and we found some fish. I found some big schools, but you have to go through the numbers in order to get a couple good ones. It seems, uh, it seems that's kind of the deal. Plus we had a terrible wind for, um, drifting in the river, a North wind. It's better than an East wind, but a North wind is still going to make your drifts a little more complicated. Your, your bait's going to be going down river while your boats go in the opposite direction. And so to line those up and make them make those drifts properly, uh, can be tough. I think what we should do as we're waiting for Joe, he's going to be a few minutes yet before we bring him on. Uh, we do want to do a giveaway guys. We're going to do the, uh, the super chat giveaway. Um, it's cause it's been a while. I've, I've been trying to keep up with all this stuff. So let me see if I can, uh, pull this out. So every time you super chat, uh, for every dollar you donate, uh, you get in the drawing and then we'll pick it, uh, before the end of the live show. Let's go through tonight's, uh, giveaway while we got everybody. Uh, we're going to give away another hoodie. The, uh, do you even flog bro? Okay. We got a lot of those in inventory. So we're just trying to. <laughs> That's all. We got a monster bass hat. Very nice hat. Man, nice looking hat. A mercury beanie for those cold August days. <laughs> How about the mercury finger? Yes. We got the foam mercury finger we're going to throw in there. The one finger <laughs> salute. Of course, you get the smallmouth crush buff. And. Not only that, I got two Monster Bass boxes to give away. Of course, Monster Bass sponsors this live show. They have a monthly box subscription. They got some really cool stuff that comes every month, guys. You can go over to MonsterBass.com. Uh, this one here, all kinds of goodies. I'm just going to share a few of the different baits that are in this box we got some soft plastics we got oh did i really want to give that away no i'm gonna take that one out of there but we got a smallmouth crush sticker we got some nico we got some z baits we got some beast coast open water sniper jigs in that box that's a packed box here guys and to be honest with you i think that's good enough M. Jones starts it out. We'll get you logged in. I got another Monster Bass box as well. This is the Lunker Hunt Takeover. Say what you want about Lunker Hunt, but every once in a while, they got some gems in there. So we're going to send that to you. And if you do catch one on this spider, I want to hear about it. Or maybe that's the roach. It says it's a reckless roach. JP. Man. If the roach, if the roach isn't good enough, Let's try the battle beetle. <laughs> I want to see. I want to see your fish catches on the battle beetle, the reckless roach. We got all kinds of weird stuff in this box. We'll definitely, definitely get you a bit. So hey, that's going out that, as well. You did you know that your super fan waves current and ice took won first the BFL on Champlain? On I'm Coney well Park. aware of that. I see him Thank in the you. comments. Nice job. Nice job. That, that was on uh, Champlain, right? Yeah. Yeah. I saw. I saw. He gave uh, credit to some scent company that wasn't my smallmouth crush magic scent. You know, <laughs> as an avid listener, you think he'd have all that ready to go crushing those fish. But no, <laughs> no, no. I see how it is. Waves kind of nice. <laughs> Oh, man. Uh -huh. Oh, wow. M. Jones says the spider actually works. Caught 23 pounds down Gunnersville with it. Hmm. Of course it works. I was just thinking, I wish I owned a topwater roach. Well, now's your chance. Super chat gets you in the entries. So far, M. Jones is leading. All right, JP, what's the plan? What's going on? What's What's the plan tomorrow? The plan tomorrow, you know, I'm going to wake up probably around quarter to five, swing down to the local gas station, grab a coffee, 
pull into that mud bay ramp at about quarter to six, slap the dude in the boat, hopefully only burn about three gallons of gas to have the guy tell me he had the time of his life and bring him back with a smile on his face. All right. Well, we've been yeah. averaging we've been averaging about 30 to 40 gallons a day, bud. So, <laughs> you, know, you got to do what you got to do. How's that oil change doing? Uh, so far, so good. I appreciate that. So you guys that. know, last weekend after I got done with uh, vigorous guiding and then um, I had my father and my son come up on Saturday – and uh, my son and my father caught like 23 and a half pounds by 1030 in the morning. And then I told him, hey, we're cutting the trip short. We got to go to the weigh-in because I wanted to watch Jody, you know, at the time potentially win the Open, which he did end up doing. And uh, went up there. And then on the way home, I get, I'm having a barbecue. Swing by the house with your peeps. So my father, my son, and I go over there. And Travis comes out with a half a pound bag of CVS charcoal. And burgers and dogs, so we think we're going to be having a good time in the backyard. Next thing you know, big bro, once again, wrenching on his mercury. Not only did I do the lower unit, but I did the actual oil change on the motor, which was fun because I hadn't done one of them yet. So um, it was good. We ended up having to make a pit stop to AutoZone to grab an oil filter wrench because the factory put the oil filter on so tight I couldn't get it off by hand. Very good. No, Any issues with that oil change? What's that? Any issues with that oil change? No, should I? Perfect. No. Nope. I trust you. I trust we, you, man. We put seven cords in it and sent it just like they said to. So, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. we got a little bit more work to the boat. I need to get some uh some USB outlets reinstalled. That's that's on John, but John don't return my text messages. So, if you see him, I don't know if he's around, JP, yeah, you can maybe <laughs> He's in the shower right now. I got to grab a water. Oh, okay. All right. That's fine. Uh, what else is new? So, yes, Eric is on family vacation again for the second month in a row. I think he's in Deep Creek. I'm not sure. Last I heard, he was uh, uh oh, having a bonfire. There it is. Yeah, I need that one. That's a basic right, Joe, number. We got you in. Wave turn nice, MJ. We got you down. That's the most standard screwdriver on the planet i can't believe you're that worried about that one well dude it's it's hard to come by so those are my milwaukee screwdrivers and believe it or not i don't have a lot of phillips screwdrivers so when people take tools from me and don't return it i get a little upset That's yeah all, you know it's all good you knew you'd get it back i know i i, I absolutely <laughs> i knew i did all right, how about that drop minnow, guys? Huh? Man. Them boys down on St. Clair putting in the work on the Elite Series the uh, last couple days, and there was a couple anglers in the top 10 using that bait. Of course, um, Pratco now owns Great Lakes Finesse, and uh, that only is, is great for distribution. They're going to be have more outlets. You guys are going to be able to get some of those baits. I know it's been tough in the last couple weeks to uh, – to order those, but you can find those now. Also, I want to give a shout out to Beast Coast Fishing. They just had a huge order of open water sniper jigs come in. And I also want to say that the, um, what was that tournament? I got to look here. Where's my phone now, JP? Here we go. I want to give a shout out to the, let me see if I can find it. Do, do, do. It's the the Empire Team Trail Open is out at Cape Vincent this weekend, Saturday and Sunday. It's a two day tournament. If anybody in the area that wants to fish, a open out of Cape Vincent this weekend. Yeah, don't tell Jody because I don't want him showing up. JP, today could get in. What's that? Tried to launch her today. Yeah, I guess they close it during the week. That's yeah. what Travis was saying. They only open it on the weekends. Yeah. You're telling me that the guy that you're having on the show, you don't want showing up to the tournament? We just, you, I mean, I see he's been, I see he's ready to go here, but uh, hopefully he's got some other plans this weekend because we don't need him up there kicking our butt again. <laughs> you know? But I got a feeling he might be showing up. We're going to find out. Let's bring our guests of the evening. Right, hold on. on. I got an introduction I want to do to this guy. Oh, okay. Go All ahead. Right. I give, right, I give you full. 
All right, guys, here we go. He is a Bassmaster Co-Angler Champion. He is the 2022 St. Lawrence River ABA Champion. He is the 2022 ABA Angler of the Year. The 2023 back-to-back -back ABA St. Lawrence River Champion with Lunker. And, of course, the 2023 Bassmaster Open Waddington, New York Champion. The one and only Jody, the name eraser, White. <laughs> 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 Thanks for having me, JP. That's wow. beautiful as always. <laughs> that was great. I didn't expect that. Did I miss anything? Uh, probably. <laughs> I I don't think so. I, I think he did it perfectly. <laughs> all right. Are you showing up this weekend to the Cape Vincent boat ramp? That's all we need to know because we'll stay home if you are. <laughs> no, no. We no. got a we got an ABA at Oneida, man. We got to oh. stay on it. That's right. That's right. You're in the points race there. Are you leading? No, I missed the first one. Uh, I am trying to scratch and claw my way to be like the last person in to the race. Scott, it'll take a miracle season, uh, I think. So, but I don't know. I'm just fishing. Man, are you gonna put any practice time in or just show up like you always do and win? I'm going out Thursday morning. Oh, right nice. There we go. There we go. Yeah. So we, uh, I, I want... we're really ahead of the game. We booked our lodging today. Super <laughs> <Right? dialed in. laughs> well, we, we wanted to have you on, Jody. It was an impressive win uh, fishing at that level, uh, the Bassmaster Open. I want to talk. Let's talk a little bit about, I mean, where do we even start? For those that don't know, Jody, let's, let's share a little bit about your background. And then I want to hear about your, I guess, if this was your first, if this was the first time you ever fished the Bassmaster Open, uh, if you're fishing all of them, what was kind of, you know, how, what was the feeling going into this event? Like, what was your expectation? So we're going to get into, I got a bunch of questions. So if you could just kind of share a little bit of background on yourself, Jody, and then we'll uh, fire away with some questions for you. Yeah. Uh, so I grew up in Vermont and uh, went to school at Virginia Tech, fished in college, uh, and then right out of college and i was like okay in college not like there are kids who are way better than me like i fished against jordan lee he was way better than me then no. he's way better than me now <laughs> um but uh fished in college and then started working for flw right out of the gate uh which is great and i lived in minnesota for a little while and then kentucky and then uh started working for mlf when flw became mlf and now I live in Vermont again, which is great because I get to fish where I actually like to fish. Um, sure. And then, like, during that saga, you know, I kept fishing here and there, and I fished some local stuff here and there. I did some opens as, like, a co-angler. Uh, I did some from the front of the boat. was pretty phenomenally unsuccessful uh, down south. And uh, now here I am. And I'm... Uh, just still going to keep fishing as much as I can. And then also taking pictures of fishing and writing about fishing. And uh, so you, so, so you live in Vermont now, is that probably going to be where your home base will be like moving forward? I, I plan on it. Uh, definitely somewhere up here. Uh, I mean, I, I like our lakes too much. I don't mind winter, you know, mm -hmm. like February. I love being in Florida then, uh, but otherwise I'm pretty dang happy up here. Sure. What would be, I guess, what would be considered your home body of water or like <laughs> probably like Lake Bombazine or Lake St. Catherine <laughs> Okay. Uh, from like uh where I fish the most perspective. And then like, you know, I guess Champlain is like my closest tournament lake. Sure. Um, but even that, like the South end is, you know, an hour and change. And then the North end is, you know, two and a half or two or three, depending on where you want to go up there. So what's your favorite body of water to fish? If you could pick, if you could pick one body of water to fish the rest of your life, would you be able to narrow that down? I'd probably just pick Champlain. Champlain. I, okay. I, I like the variety, like the fact that you can do, you know, you can be up North and you can do five different things. You can be down South. You can do, different things you can catch them in the middle like it's got mountains alongside it i love 
I like looking at mountains. Right. Um, I would say that would probably be the pick or Bamo. And I'm really coming on to the St. Lawrence. Yeah. But I see that. a lot of it, like, I really like the Thousand Islands region, but the part like to the east, I don't know. It's just, I don't, I haven't figured out how to catch fish there yet. And it's all kind of the same looking. It's not like, it's not like really pretty to run down necessarily or sure. to look at. And so you're and talking, there, you're talking like the, the Waddington Messina zone, like that. Yeah. That I'd way? Say. Like, yeah, yeah. Or, or even like Ogdensburg and stuff like that. Like, I feel like when you get like around Chippewa, it kind of opens up and then it, like that's where it starts to get cool mm -hmm. at least right. for me yeah yeah well, well let's talk about the st lawrence event uh that was just what two weeks the 20 was the 20th 21st and 22nd so it was a three-day tournament you have pretty much a bunch of like some of the best anglers to ever fish this body of water entered this event a lot of guys were doing the whole uh the whole opens was at nine of them. You just chose yeah. to jump into this. Unfortunately with this win, like, do you have regrets that you're not going to be in the classic? No, like not, not really. No. I mean, obviously I think that, you know, I can't imagine not wanting to fish the classic, right? Like it's a yeah. lifetime achievement for every bass angler, but yeah. you have to fish three in the division. And yeah. I feel I should like go back and look and see. Do you remember when what? Uh, what was it? What was the first one? Uh, it wasn't Watts Bar. It was that's after. I can't, it was Bugs I mean, Island. Do you remember when that was? Like no, I don't. I don't. Um, May maybe. Okay. I'm guessing. It was so. It was the very beginning of May. You're dead right, and it was on top of the MLF Inv Invitationals event at like the Ozarks. So like. I couldn't fish that anyway because I had to go work. And sure. as much as it would be really, it'd probably be fun to fish three in a division if like the schedule really lined up and like you got maybe two northern events. Yep. I'm not like I, I don't know. I I can't be mad about something that I never really had an opportunity to to go for. Sure. Know? Yeah. No, that makes sense. So signing up for this tournament. Obviously, this year with the new rules, uh, we're not allowed on that body of water 30 days prior. Um, so, unfortunately, for guys like JP and myself, that kind of kind of hurts our. I guess we'll, we'll it'll be hard for us unless and and you know you got to make a choice. Yeah, and, and the opens for some reason it seems like every other year they they do some rule changes. So I'm not saying this rule's permanent; it's always going to be that because who knows. Um, but for us not to be able to fish for 30 days prior, especially in the summer, it's a little tough when you were kind of making a living guiding. Uh, so you had to stay off the water and you were only allowed, what is it? Five days of practice in? Yeah. Which actually like five days, honestly, is a kind of a long time, less long there. Cause it's such a big body of water. But mm -hmm. I mean, if you can't figure out what you're doing in five days, I don't think six was going to help you. You know what I mean? Like probably it's just not going to happen. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, which I was fine with because I love going. I, I love going up there now, and but at the same time, like it was, it was good because I pre-practiced for that ABA and I practiced out in the lake, and just never went in the river. And it was kind of good to force me to see new things and maybe learn new things. And I mean, I don't need like guides like you and JP getting in this tournament all the time. JP was catching like 24 <laughs> pounds a day during this thing. Right. Like, we would have been toast if he was in it. <laughs> uh -huh. So the tournaments out of Waddington, have, have you ever ran from Waddington out to the lake or in that zone before? Nope. The uh, first day of the tournament was the first day that I did it. And I literally, like I was running parts of the river that, I mean, honestly, I, think there were probably some stretches that I'd literally never been before. You know, I'm like sure. following the map, following the yeah. crowd yep. and being like, Oh, is this the, the right way? <laughs> oh yeah. Sure. Here it is between these little random islands. And yep. I feel pretty comfortable doing it now after uh, three days of it. Yeah. But it was, I kind of thought about like 
trying to fake the run one day in practice. Just once I realized I was going to run all the way out past mm-hmm. Clayton, that I was going to do it. And I ended up like deciding that that was silly or that was just going to be way too much gas. Yeah. And uh, I guess in hindsight, like if I had won by an ounce and I'd gotten there a minute earlier because I didn't, because I faked the run in practice, it would have been a great, you know, would have been a great cost benefit analysis. But at Mm -hmm. the same time, like at the time I was thinking, well, I'll get a check and man, if I burn like a hundred dollars of gas for this, that seems like a little bit excessive. And so, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. So how much did, did you have to fill up every day during the tournament? I did. I think I, so I think maybe if I had like gone to where I was starting and then gone exactly straight back, I maybe wouldn't have needed to fill up because I usually burn 25 or 26 gallons on the way out. Okay. And I was like setting them the like little Merc gauge at zero when I would, you know, turn the key in the morning. Sure. And, um, then I was getting 15 gallons of gas at Clayton on the on the way back. And then usually I was putting like almost 40 gallons in at the end of the day. So I was definitely burning, you know, and that was with some extra stops and like a little more windiness on the run back usually. Mm-hmm. So I was definitely like, I was burning a lot of gas. Um, yeah. But not like if guys run out there from Messina. I mean, oh, right. one year... Chris Johnston won the Toyota series running into the lake from Messina. He probably mm. had to literally fill up every time he, he stopped, you know? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I remember that event. Uh, that's one thing. That's one thing that always, I guess made me nervous when you see these events out of Messina or Waddington and you sign up for them, you know, a month or two ahead of time. And a lot of times they're like the BFLs and things like that. And it's like you never know what your conditions are going to be that day. So leading up to this tournament, you you obviously found – did you find a bunch of areas with good fish, or what were your thoughts uh, for – how did your practice go leading up to it? So I thought that I had found a bunch of areas with good fish because the really my first day of practice was the ABA that I fished out there on Saturday, and it went great, and I caught – like four pounders all over the place. And then my second day of practice, I caught like a bunch more four and five pounders, uh, like around Chippewa on Sunday. And so I thought I had like a lot of good places. And the first day I fished my starting spot. And then I spent like half the day running other stuff and just didn't catch crap on it. And then the second day I did the same thing. (laughs) And, Mm. uh, didn't really catch anything anywhere but the starting spot. And the third day I came off plane and I did not crank the motor until it was time to go get gas. <laughs> Cause I was just like, I'm going to live here. Cause everything that I thought I had figured out wasn't working. <laughs> sure. Sure. So day one, you, what, what was your weight on day one? Roughly. Oh, great question. Um, I think it was 25 something. Okay. I actually, this is the first tournament that I've ever sl- uh, saved my way slips from. And like, actually, uh, like I actually have plans to do something with them as opposed to like keep them sure. around and then lose them. Right. Yeah. But yeah, let's see. Day one was 25, 11. Okay. So 25 pounds, 11 ounces. Yep. What did you think you had? Uh, that was more than I thought I had because there was one fish that I weighed that I knew it was big, but it didn't go in the scale. Right. And then I knew I had like 24 and change on the Rapala. And so I was surprised to have that much. I thought there was a pretty good chance I would have like close to 25, but Mm -hmm. I I didn't think I'd have, you know, 25 and three quarters almost. Um, And that was kind of par for the, Oh, go ahead. What time in the morning did you have that weight at? Probably like nine o'clock, pretty Man. early. Like maybe maybe ten. I, I I put it in when I I had that weight when I put twenty four pounds on Bass Track, and I don't know exactly what time that was, but it was uh, it was pretty early. That's impressive. Yeah. 
So you you thought, let's just say, so you, you're going back with 24 pounds, at least that's what you thought. Um, were you nervous on the ride back? Did you give yourself plenty of time? Did you feel like that was a good bag? Were you happy with what you got? Like, what was going through your mind? Well, like, I knew it was a good bag. I was happy. But I was also still trying to catch more because I think I had a low, I think I had two low fours in there. I had, like, a four eight a 4.1 a and then a four something else um and i guess you know being uh this dialed on i'm not carn right dialed on fish weights let's put it that way mm -hmm. um <laughs> but anyway i had two low fours and i was like stopping my whole way back trying to catch more fish that day one was honestly probably the day that i fished my starting spot like the least um because it just happened so fast uh yeah and then i got about like i got down by chippewa and i'm still fishing hard and alec morrison called me and he had blown his lower unit and i was like well maybe i can turn around but i might need to get gas again i don't know if i can get you and get us back and like, yeah right. i wasn't sure he's like no you you crush them don't do that <laughs> go just yeah. go to weigh in and alec honestly kind of scared me because I all of a sudden I'm thinking to myself, holy smokes, what if something happens? Sure. And right. so I was like, mm -hmm. I looked at my co-angler and he hadn't caught one yet. And I was like, are you okay if we just go to weigh in? And he's like, yeah, okay. You got, I guess he thought I had a really big bag, bigger than like, which it was a big bag, but Corey caught like t almost 27 that day. I had just caught 27 in the ABA. Like it's a St. Lawrence. Like think crazy things happen. Mm -hmm. And so Alec kind of scared me and I drove back at like 55 miles an hour. <laughs> I was like, I'm going to just go right on back, <laughs> check yeah. my fish under the Ogdensburg bridge and just rolled. Sure. How, as far as fish care goes, did you have to fizz the fish? Did you stop and make sure that, that how, were they, did you feel like they were going to make it? So all the fish I weighed in were alive and there was one, there was really one that I weighed that was like kind of iffy. Like it was not in great shape. I would say all the others seemed pretty healthy, honestly. JP, uh -huh. you saw them on the last day. They were, I thought, like for a fish that I just trucked almost 80 miles, like <laughs> I thought they were in pretty good shape. Oh, yeah. Um, and I fizzed every one of them. I was putting like rejuvenate in, and then the last day, G juice, um, and then a bunch of ice and like running on research. Like yeah. I was doing all the stuff that you're supposed to do. And, it seemed like it worked um or at least you know it worked for the tournament you never can say i don't know exactly how they do post tournament uh but i bet some of them swam off pretty good and yeah. honestly i feel like i've caught some fish out in front of clayton that looked like they came from tournaments like they had a little beat upness to it so we're mm -hmm. i hope i hope we're doing something right yeah but yeah, yeah i weighed them all in alive and i was happy about that sure so you so you you get get to weigh in and what place were you in on day one? Second. Second. Weeding the Americans. <laughs> yes, yes, I saw that. I, I kind of I didn't know that was a joke at first. I'm thinking, do they have different divisions now? <laughs> I saw that. <laughs> that would actually be amazing. It uh, took me a little while to figure that out. But uh so yeah, so Jody goes on his Instagram leading uh the American side of the Bassmaster open because obviously uh a Canadian, uh, one of the Johnsons, uh, was leading on day one. So day two, now you're all excited. You're in second place. Day two, uh, what were you feeling going in? How, and how was the weather? We didn't even talk about that. Like, were you concerned about the run and the weather, or did you feel good the next two days based on the forecast? Uh, day one, the weather was awesome. Uh, day three, I didn't care. It was gravy. Whatever happened, happened. Day two was the one that I was concerned about because I had a short day on day two and it was supposed to be windy and it kind of blew mostly out of the West, I would say mm -hmm. on day two. And it, it got a little bit bad around Chippewa. And other than that, it was like pretty manageable. Um, as far as the run goes, fishing, like, I was, my trolling motor was not in the water like half the time on day two. Like it took me a while to catch my fish. It was hard. Like it was difficult fishing. Um, 
just because of how much wind there was. Okay. Um, but uh, it was so like day two is the one I was concerned about. I actually borrowed a motorcycle helmet from Nolan Gaskin. Uh huh. Uh, and uh, for the run, which was great. I'm yep. gonna invest in one now. Actually, it yeah. was maybe not for my boat because my boat goes like fifty. But right, it was phenomenal to uh, to have that. I stopped and put it on when we like got to a rainstorm like right around Ogdensburg, and I didn't take it off the rest of the way. And oh, it was the deal. Um, so that was that was key. And really, that day two with the weather and the storms and all. It just was not a really super friendly weather day. That was the that was the day that really concerned me. And then we kind of got lucky. It slipped off in the afternoon for the run back. Like it was really nice on, yeah. well, on the way back, although there were some storms like kind of in between in that. What did you have for weight on day two and how long did it take you to get that weight? Um, 22 something, uh, I think. And then it probably took me – I bet it took me twice as long. Like I probably stayed until like or so on day two. I feel like like it wasn't day two where I put my things now. JP, you still got me, Joe? You kind of froze. Is he froze on your end? He's froze. Oh, All right. back. You're, we can kind of hear you. Um, we'll give it a second. Your internet was working great until this point for some reason. I haven't moved. <laughs> there you are. Now you're back. Okay, great. Um, all right. So it took you a little while longer. Were you a little concerned right away in the morning? Like what, what was going through your head? Cause you're second place, right? And you know, you need to catch it. what do you think you need to have? What was your goal? And what did you think uh, you had? I didn't have a, I guess I probably had like 22, nine or something or whatever I had on the Apollo was like what I thought I had. Um, but I didn't, um, at that point, like I was incredibly nervous, but I also still like Corey was way out in front. And at this point, the whole tournament, I was super nervous, but I also had this like level of calm just because like it was all sort of gravy. Like I couldn't believe how well it was going, you know, that I, mm -hmm. I was actually in contention. So I was super nervous, but even if I'd gone out and caught like 15 pounds, I still would have, like, I would have been disappointed. I still would have said, wow, I just, you know, got a check in a Bassmaster Open on the St. Lawrence. That's pretty sure. good. Yeah. You know, I, I didn't have, I had a lot of room to be like, to do bad or to go down from day one and still, you know, still be pretty happy with it. Cause I could have said, you know, this is the second time I've made such a long run. The weather was bad. I didn't catch them. Oh, well. And like, I think I mentally would have been okay with that. And it turned out that I went out and I had kind of a tougher day than day one. Corey had a tougher day than day two on day two. We stayed kind of, close you know close ish close for that river certainly yeah and uh like it just kind of worked out like that honestly the scariest part was day two uh the spot i was starting on like there were a few other people there on day one they were there on day two Corey was there on day two as well so i roll in and it's like me and Corey johnston like almost boat to boat and i'm like oh crap i did not bargain for this because did you talk to moment, him at all did you guys communicate uh on the water, I said, good morning, Corey. And he might have like grunted or something, or he might have said something and it was too windy. I'm not really sure. Uh, but I was like, beyond saying like, good morning, I was like, just honed in trying to catch fish. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then we talked it way in the next day and a little bit in the morning the next day and stuff. Like, uh -huh. it was not. Did, it, did you, how it was long a little bit he, awkward, I guess, but. Did he stay? So, so okay, day two. Was there other guys in contention on your spot besides Corey? Not really. John and did Canada they know? Was... Did they know you guys were kind of the weight leaders? And did they give you space, or did they battle it out, or how did that go down? We didn't really have a lot of space on day two. We had a little bit of 
uh, Julius Maisie was there for a little bit and then left when he saw I was there, which I thought was fantastic. I was a huge fan of that Um, because any breathing room I could have was like really appreciated. Um, And a lot of the other guys that were Mm -hmm. there just didn't really stay long. Like, I don't know if I was the last person there on day two, but other people like they kind of filtered out and left. Corey didn't stay really long. Um, Did you see him catch any fish while he was there? I don't think so, but like I also it was windy. Yeah. It was like I was I was trying to pay attention to other people out of the corner of my eye, but I mean, you know, when you're looking at live scope, like any second away from looking at live scope is like a wasted second, you know. Mm-hmm. So I was it's hard not to be like really honed in on your own stuff. Yeah. I feel like I think that would be for like it would kind of mess with your head a little bit if you know he's leading he wasn't there the day one and he kind of shows up and now yeah. he's like catching fish in front of you that would kind of freak me out a little bit oh it would have terrified me for sure <laughs> i mean when i saw him it terrified me but yeah, yeah you know it is for one it's like it's a community area for two every place on the river is a johnston spot right sure. like I don't think you can go anywhere where they haven't probably caught a four pounder at some point in time. Mm -hmm. Um, So, you know, if he wants to roll up by all means, and then also like he could have been there in the afternoon on day one and I just never saw him. So like there was a lot of opportunity for like, I've covered it long enough to know that like people can show up at the same place by accident and it's not like, there's not something like nefarious behind it. Sometimes it does just happen. (laughs) Yeah, so. no, that's a good point. So now you're running back with with your weight, and what 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 does it look like at the at the second day at the end of the tournament? What, what place are you in now? Still in second. Still in second, and who's still in first? second? Corey's still in first. I think I'm like a pound behind or something like that. One pound. So he had a real rough. What did he weigh in on day two? He only had like twenty pounds. Okay. Yeah, he had a tough day. Like for the Johnstons, you know, a lot yeah. of people, you catch 20 pounds. Like, wow, this is great. <laughs> right. Okay. So now you're in the top, is it top 10? Yeah, yeah. I think so. Or 12. Was it 10 or 12? 10. I don't know. 10 yeah. is it? It used to be 12. But so top 10, you're going out. So your second boat out, right? They go by the, by yep. what place you're in. Do you have a, do you have a co still on day three? No, they have a co angler winner on day two, and then we have Marshalls, which I guess most of them are co anglers who were in it. Uh, I had a guy whose name was James Cobbs, I think, or James Cobb. I should mm-hmm. check on that. But anyway, he was super cool. Yeah, uh, he was like from Alabama, from Auburn, like good dude. Didn't tell me anything and was like relaxed when I was like losing. Like if I lost, I lost one. Like might have been six pounds. It was definitely five pounds. And he was like, oh, that's a bummer. Not like, oh, wow, you just blew it. So <laughs> shout out to him for that. That was uh, huge. <laughs> yeah. So so day three, you run back to that area. Uh, who do you have with you? Is there anybody else in that zone? Nobody. Nobody. It was beautiful. Right. Uh, it's me, two guys trolling for walleye, and then um, JT Tompkins came in for like, 10 minutes near the end of the day at probably like 11 o'clock and we talked for a second and he realized it was me and he left and i was like wow that was nice of him and uh anyway that was like i just i went and camped Mm -hmm. i would i would have cooked breakfast you know i was there for i was going to be there all day and how many uh how long did it take you to get your first bite on day one or day three oh probably like five minutes five minutes i mean like it was, it happened fast again. I had like 20 pounds in an hour and I think I probably made my last call with like probably like an hour before I left. Like it, I was fishing really relaxed because I had, I knew that I had just like, I was going to dedicate the whole day to that spot, that area. Cause it's not really, it's not like one waypoint, you know, it's a stretch. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I knew I was going to dedicate the whole day to it. I was always seeing fish on the scope. I was moving around on it. Like I, 
I was eight. I, you know, I was able to like lose a couple of fish, do a couple of dumb things and still kind of keep plugging away. And just knowing I like had a lot of time really settled me down because even though we still had to be in at two thirty, which is earlier than it was on day one, you know, how, how much time did you think there. you needed to get back? Like what, uh, what was going to be like the latest you would stay and how long could you have stayed if you really had to? How long could I have stayed? If I mean, I feel like anything under, if I left like less than an hour and a half to run back and that's like counting, getting gas, yeah. I think that would have been pushing pretty risky. Okay. Like I would have had to run hard. Um, but I, I pulled the plug with like, I had like a solid two and a half hours, or like two hours and 40 minutes to run back. And okay. I got back and I did a couple drifts in, in front of Waddington and uh, had some gobies bite it and um, then went in like five minutes early. Okay. So like I definitely, you know, I could have... I could have fished longer, obviously every day. I could have fished yeah. a little longer that last day, but it seemed like, I don't know. It just seemed like the smart thing. And the last day I was really glad I actually spent, I, I was glad I gave myself extra time because there was just so much weekend boat traffic that I had like kind of accounted for, but hadn't really thought it all the way through sure. that, uh, you know, around that Clayton and like the Canadian narrows and like that side there, it's like a mess on the weekend, which you're probably really familiar with. And I uh, definitely was glad I gave myself some extra time because I was able to take it easy. I think be a little bit nicer to the fish, yeah. uh, all that kind of thing. So, so what did you have for weight day three and what did you think you have and what was going through your mind on the way back? Did you think you had a shot? Did you like, I'm going to win this thing? What, what, what was your mindset? So I had 2310 and I knew I had a, uh, I knew I had another big bag because I had like 22.9 or something on my scale, which mm -hmm. at, at that point, day three, I'm like, well, I'm going to have more than it says in the Rapala because that's just sort of what it's been, what's been happening. Sure. And I'm not worried about it, but you know, I, I, I at the same time, like, I thought I had like low 23. I didn't really have in my head that I had 23 and three quarters again, or 2310. Um, and I still didn't like, I didn't think that I'd won, you know, cause really? it's Corey. And I have just so much respect for what the Johnstons do out there. And I've seen them, you know, Chris and Corey do mm -hmm. so well, so many times I've seen them catch big bags at, improbable times i've seen them you know really do some pretty amazing things out there and uh i i just thought that i had a chance you know and it was it was so cool to be running back and especially like when it sort of was slick kind of near ogdensburg and like i was kind of boogieing a little bit because it was calm and the fish seemed right. to be doing all right and it was it was just so special to be running back, like realizing you are like actually in the hunt. Um, and, uh, I mean, hmm. Brett Carnwright on my podcast, he talked about how it would feel to run around Cumberland head on Champlain and win a tournament. And mm -hmm. like his, like literally Brett's words, were, like going through my head as I'm running. Well, down the river it's really jp you got me joe got you're kind of you cut out again oh now you're back you missed the best part say that again and jp can you turn a light bulb on bud man i was just gonna say <laughs> is there something wrong with my camera because i seem to be dimming out here i'm like what are we, the, are we in the amish or what come on yeah, you need some you need some light I don't think does I have. Jeff, does John got the Amish set up over there? <laughs> Hold on. Oh, we're good. 
Jeez, GP. Okay. There we go. What's that? That's all you got? All right. All right. You're you're running and and Britt was talking about coming around Cumberland oh, as so, far as coming back. Yeah. Yeah. Brett Brett was talking about how he had always thought it must be an amazing feeling to run around Cumberland head, going back into Plattsburgh with a big bag, knowing that you could win a tournament, that you could win a major event, you know, a Toyota, an open, something like that. And all of a sudden right. I find myself in like the same position he just described. You know, I'm sure. running down this river oh, and oh, Corbin it's not says, There's your Amish. You turn the light on for me. Sorry for interrupting. Oh, now we're talking. That's that's <laughs> that's go. the that's the stuff. And so I'm running down the river and sure it's not home, right? Like it's for Brett, Cumberland Head has got all these, you know, it's got childhood memories there. And yeah. I don't have that at the St. Lawrence, but I'm still running back and my mind is like kind of clicking around and I'm realizing like one, I didn't lose it. And then two, you know, I'm closer than I've ever been, probably ever will be to the kind of thing that we all dream about. And it was just, I was really special to come back. And uh, then of course, when I got back, I was like, well, I got to fish a little bit more and try and catch a big one. And okay. then, uh, I didn't. And so I came in a little bit early. And as soon as I came off plane, I asked my marshal, I said, so what's the score? Did Corey catch him? And he's like, do you really want to know? And uh, you did. Like, so I'm like, yeah, I want to know. Uh -huh. <laughs> and uh, he's like, I think you won. He's only got 19 pounds. And I was like, then I just freaked out, like internally right. anyway. I was like losing it mentally. I was like, are you kidding me? 19 pounds well if you sandbag that that could be 25 still 24 six pounds would be a lot to sandbag maybe it's not that like i was i was right yeah. after that so maybe i shouldn't have not asked <laughs> yeah right but uh yeah it was uh it was something else man so walk us through the way in what what how they go down oh my uh mom was there my girlfriend was there jp was there uh we had dogs out the wazoo. Uh, Will JP was there. Um, it was like it was great. Uh, it was weird being in a bag line and and waiting for a whole way. And normally when I'm working a way in, like a you know, especially sure. a top ten way in, where it's not really cruising along, right? Like you sit there, you listen to people talk, you clap some, you sit there more, you listen to people talk more. Um, usually at one of those, like I'm busy the whole time. Right. I'm walking around. I talk to 10 people. I take photos. I do this. I do that. And this time I'm just like sitting there, uh, you know, next to Jamie Bruce, next to Corey, uh, next to Brent Anderson, and just like thinking about what might happen. <laughs> and Corey's got his fish and he's like convinced that they weigh like 12 pounds at this point. He's any stuff. Are, are you guys sandwich. are you guys talking? I mean, a little bit. We were kind of like all talking and like Corey had some of his family there. And I think he was like a little disgruntled because he'd had a tough day. But like mm -hmm. I was talking with like Jamie Bruce and uh, me and Brent Anderson probably did like a solid 15 minutes about like how to keep fish alive because Brent had had some trouble with it. And we were like trying to troubleshoot it for him. And, you know, it's just a it was a very surreal experience. Mm -hmm. Like I've never. I've never experienced something like that before where I was just so tense for such a long period of time. Let, I'm like trying that. not to be, but I'm still internally extremely tense. And so Corey, Corey Johnston owned that sausage sub that his wife brought him to. It was like an episode of uh, cone man, dude. <laughs> <laughs> he ate the sausage sub like i never seen anybody eat a sausage sub before just so you guys know i thought All it was right. like a burger and fries so that just shows how like not tuned in, how like in another world i was during this whole way in all right so so they I'm go through the way in. <laughs> they go through the way and who goes like so you go you're the last you're the second to last away in right Corey's gonna be behind yeah. you okay yep so so was there anyone that had a shot other than Corey to beat you that you thought I guess, in that line? I, I guess not. Like, okay. realistically, no. And I kind of 
talked around to the other people and uh you know nobody else had had a really big day right like i was definitely the guy who had had the best day in that line or at least in that top group right because it's sort of stretched out and like it's weird but like i don't really think i talked to whoever was in ninth place or 10th place coming into the day like just because mm-hmm. there was like just enough distance between us somehow sure. Yep. Just like physical distance, not like, oh, they're bad at fishing or something. Just they had us stretched along. And so I'm just talking to who's next to me. And it was uh, really like, I just don't think I was very mentally present for it. Like mm-hmm. when I try to think back and like recall specific things or like, I, I really can't. Like I was just extraordinarily nervous the entire time. Wow. So you go up. I'd like to be like cool and collected, but that's just not true. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So you go up, weigh your fish and then, uh, Corey comes up. Right. And what did Corey need to beat you? Do you remember? So I weigh my fish, I'm holding them. Then I drop one of them. (laughs) (laughs) when I'm like putting it back in the bag and I have a, uh-huh. a small mouth do like a four foot nose dive. So that one right. may not have made it. Yep. Um, but, uh, I don't know. I mean, I guess if let's see what I win by like a pound and change or almost two pounds. So Corey oh, wow. would have needed Corey needed almost like a pound less than me. And if I had 2310, like, Basically, he needed like twenty two something to have it. Yep. Is that math out right? That yeah. sounds right. Yeah. Yeah. Which is a good bag there. It's yeah. out, it's also at the same time a bag that the Johnstons have caught and you have caught and like anyone who's fished there a lot has caught dozens and dozens of times. Like it's not. Mm-hmm. It's not like I went out and caught like twenty eight pounds on the last day. You know. Sure. Yeah. I'm sure it would have felt different if it was like that. You know, I had a good day, but it wasn't like some kind of just, you know, unreal situation. Man. Okay. So, so Chris or Corey goes on stage, like what's going through your head right there? Like you're seeing them put the fish on the scales, right? Like, were you peeking at the weight? Did you wait till they announce it? What were you doing? Oh, I was peeking hard at the weight. Right. (laughs) Like, I think Corey came on stage and either I shook his hand then or I shook his hand, like, right after I saw the weight. Mm-hmm. And, but, like, I was just intensely focused on because he not his fish. And I think I had, but I mean, the pound back on and the bag kind of fit together. I feel like it's a difference between a big bag and a small bag, medium bag. Like, you know, I didn't have any in. When it when it um, and I was just so fired up. Yeah. Dang. So. Yeah. So you win, man. That's got to be like an awesome feeling. You're probably super pumped up. Everybody's happy for you. You like. Like what goes through your mind next? Uh, I don't know, JP. What went through my mind next? You were there. <laughs> Do you remember? <laughs> basically, basically, when he won, you could see like the pure shock on his face. Like, <laughs> oh my god, this just happened. Right. And then, uh, yeah, he hoisted the trophy over his head, and then he just said, "Oh my god!" again. And then they told him, "Please hoist it over your head again." Okay. Yeah, then they were like, you got to do this again. You got to do that again. <laughs> you got to go over here. You got to go over here. Like, it was exactly the stuff that I tell everybody who wins a tournament. And it was the weirdest thing to be, like, to be being, like, immediately shepherded, shepherded into, hold this here, hold this here, hold yeah. the check like this. Oh, yeah. All then right, they're like, come about your day. <laughs> yep. Come behind the trailer, yeah, was, sit down, rate the workload. Yeah. Man. Which, thank God they had a chair and let me sit down because, man. I was like shaking then it was right. so like it was incredible you know it's the yeah. kind of thing where like i have wanted to win a tournament like that ever since i knew what bass tournaments were right because that's what we all want to do 
Yeah. And to have it actually happen, and then just in the way that it did, you know, with Corey on that fishery, making those runs, like that caliber of a field, you know, it's just, uh, it's like the kind of thing you always dream about, and then all of a sudden it happened. It was sure. amazing. Did any good bags come closer to the ramp, or were guys running most of the time? Uh, I, so I know that, um, Brent Anderson was fishing relatively close. Like he yeah, was fishing. He's, he's like an Ogdensburg dude, right? I think so. And like, he catches them there a lot. Uh, yeah. he catches them even, even like around Messina and stuff like that. Uh, I, um, I remember he's got a really fast boat cause he was going out, I think in fourth place or maybe fifth, but he passed, uh, he passed everyone by the time he got to the Ogdensburg bridge. Uh -huh. um, yeah. And then I watched him pull off and, you know, pull off on a starting spot. And I was like, Holy smokes. One, that looks like a good spot. I guess I'll keep that in mind. And then right. two, uh, maybe, maybe I'll need to get him to teach me how to do this. And then two, I was like, man, lucky duck. He doesn't have to keep running for another 30 <laughs> minutes, 40 minutes. Like right. what a deal. <laughs> um, yeah, but yeah, he's got, his boat flies and I think he fished pretty local and yep. I know some guys got checks, you know, in that ballpark. I think Casey Smith got a check. He was running that middle section. Sure. But yeah. like, I'm sure there were other checks out of there, but I think I'm, the right. top I'm pretty sure pretty I saw heavy. the other eight. Yeah. The other eight boats. I'm pretty sure I saw on the final day all come down towards, you know, the Clayton area. Yeah. So. yeah. Wow. Which I was kind of surprised at. Like, I, especially the one day of practice I had around Chippewa, like, I thought that area was fishing really good. Like, it wouldn't have shocked me at all if, like, top tens had came out of there. When we had the title there last year, um, a lot of guys caught him good there. You know, Kurt Mitchell caught a really big bag. Bobby Lane caught him really good in that, you know, mid-river region, so to speak. And so, sure. I, I kind of, I didn't have it being so Clayton dominated on my radar, but I think it was. Yeah. Where do you think Corey was on the last day? Does anyone know what he was doing besides that spot you were on? Where, what was his zone? Is there any rumors uh, or, so, talk? or did he jump uh, around? Well, I have a pretty good idea where he started because he was running ahead of me. And then I saw him come off plane and he wasn't anymore. Hmm. But that's really like that's for Corey, um, and uh, I don't know. I I think that probably knowing the Johnstons, I would say they probably fished pretty much the whole river, uh, or at least a lot of it. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I don't know. I'm sure his marshal had a very interesting day because it sounded <laughs> like Corey had some frustrations, uh, and it sounds like. And I'm sure that Liz Marshall like learned a lot of stuff. Maybe some yeah. new curse words, definitely some pretty <laughs> dope spots. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, That's but true. yeah, I never saw him the last day other than when he came off plane and yeah. Yeah. I kept rolling. Yep. Yep. Dang. Now, was that before or after the fist bump? Before. Before the fist bump, he came off pain. Okay. Yeah. Because hmm. I, so I had been running, I ran through Eel Bay and like cut in front of Clayton every day. And the second day I saw JP there and I just gave a massive fist pump as I'm rolling through. I was so right. fired up. And JP is probably like, who is that crazy guy just running <laughs> through? <laughs> and then maybe figured out it was me. I don't know. I was in Billy's boat. Like you don't know to look at that. Oh, I, I no, I only reason I knew it was Jody White was because he had the infamous plaid sweatshirt on in the middle of all <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and then so day three, because of the wind being different, I'm I'm about to run a different route than I've been running each of the first two days. And then I thought to myself, what if JP is back there? I gotta go through again. <laughs> and so I like turn the Phoenix on its side almost. Like my marshal is like, what? I'm like trust me dude and we roll back there i see jp again I give him another big fist pump and we just go out and smash him That's so funny. that was the that was like key to the tournament 
And it meant yeah. I knew JP was on the water because I saw him again. So when I found out that I needed G juice, I could I had a guy to call. Yeah. <laughs> which that's a whole good story in itself, I think, which might be worth telling, especially from yeah. JP's Let's perspective. Talk about perspective. <laughs> so we're out so there. somehow I have I have like a little can of uh rejuvenate, you know, those blue green things like the atoll yep. and i had it in the cup holder and i had not been keeping it in the cup holder earlier i've been keeping it like back with my ice or something well anyway it flies out at some point on the run like i'm sure the cup holders don't do well with a half filled bottle of something sure um and i don't realize it until i start filling the live well to put my first fish in then the camera boat's pulling up on me, so I'm, I ask him, like, hey, do you have any, you know, G juice? You got any rejuvenate, anything I could put in this live well? And he's like, oh, yeah, I do. And it was like not a lot. It was like a teaspoon and uh -huh. like old and crusty and weird. And so I like threw the whole bottle in and I'm like, well, we'll see if this does anything. And it like barely turned the water green. And I'm yeah. like, man, this is. I'm like, I'm trying to keep these alive. Ounces are money in this game. I need to find, I need to like be conditioning these fish just in case. And I mean, I hadn't really had any fish care problems, but I also wasn't taking any chances at that point. And so I called Hank. I was like, hey, a buddy of mine's on the water. Can I call him? And Hank's like, sure. And uh, he was probably just like confused. Like, what is this guy asking about G Juice at seven in the morning for or whatever? Right. <laughs> and, uh, then I called JP twice, and I guess the rest is history. Yeah, so at some point, I look at my phone, and I go, oh, man, I got two missed calls from Jody. That can't be good. So I'm like, hey, <laughs> that call, right? And he's like, hey, man, what's going on? And I'm like, nothing. What, do you need a ride? Or, and he's like, no, I, I need some G-juice. Do you have any G-juice? And I'm like, dude, I don't. But I'm looking around, and there's like three bass boats within yelling distance. So I'm like, hold on a second, Jody. I'm like, Hey! Anybody got any G juice? My boy's in second and he's about to win. And this guy's like, I got some. So I was like, all right. I'm so I'm like, uh, and I'm with my father and my son, right? So I'm like, all right, guys, sit down for a second. So we idle over to this guy, and it was a, it was a, I don't know the guy's name, but it was a red and black phoenix, and they were from Alabama. And they were like, oh, you're. I thought you said Jody? Texas. Texas, that's right, Texas, yeah. And uh, I'm like, I'm like, they're like, hey, your buddy's with Jody. I'm like, yeah, yeah, he's a good friend of mine. And they're like, all right. So I stick my net out, and they stick the bottle of G juice in it. So we start going right. And we're we're going down, and it's it's kind of rough in the in the in the wider part. They're heading down, down that way. And my son's going, are we almost there, Dad? And I'm like, just relax and enjoy the ride. <laughs> so we pull up. I don't even think I came off pad. Right, I come flying. You were like <laughs> in like this, and like this was one of the most athletic moments of my life that I caught. Oh actually <laughs> so I'm, I'm plowing water because i'm like well i don't want to like stop and talk to him because i don't want to say something i'm not supposed to say or nothing and i just want to get him this jesus so i'm driving by and i'm like did you get him and he's like yes and i'm like i'll see you at the way and i huck the jesus <laughs> hit the gas and rip past him <laughs> yeah it was wild and so i grab the jesus i put it on spot lock i make those water that live well as blue as the ocean and uh go on with my day <laughs> It was so clutch. We, uh, yeah. So JP and I had guide trips that I guess Thursday and Friday of the event. And so we knew there was going to be people around. And I, I, I think Friday I had, I, I went up towards Cape Vincent for my guide trip and I was curious. I was like, man, I hope these people aren't going, you know, some of these guys in the top 10 or, or, or no, it was day two. I'm sorry. I hope, hope I'm not like messing up people's stuff, but I started up by a, a community hole on day two before the boats came in and uh, the water was like nasty in there um, because of the wind and, and, or whatever was going on. And I'm like, well, there's nothing going on here. So we slipped back to another area and I saw like three or four boats gunning for that area, two or three boats. And I go to my clients. I'm like, well, I go, I'm glad we're, we're not there when they're here, but those boats are going to like leave within 10 minutes because there's like zero visibility right there. And sure enough, they all kind of jetted out of there. And then JP, I guess I was on the water Saturday as well. You were out with your, with your family, but I don't think, 
I don't think we screwed anybody up, but it's tough when you're, I don't like being on the water during tournaments. Like I have guide trips during the elite series. Like I can't just quit working for that week. Uh, and it's always tough because you want to be respectful, but you, you also got to be out there, you know? So it, it's kind of, it's tough when you're not fishing an event, but you know, you got to be on the water. If that makes sense. Yeah. And like, you don't want to just go something, do something stupid with your clients, right? Like you want to put them on good fish. Yeah. Right. You yeah. know, you can't like, I mean, it's tough to be like, oh, well, I'm just going to avoid the fish. Like, I know there's times where guys will just, you know, we'll just not book then, but the season's short in the summer. It's not like you're in Gunnersville and sure. you can avoid three days for a Toyota series or something like that. Yeah. Or, yeah. You know, this uh, this elite event a, that's going to be up here really kind of has me like um, the fact that it's out of Clayton, right? And they can run to the lake and the river. It's going to make it tough. I'd rather have the elites out of Waddington, but uh, you got the lake to yourself. Yeah. Sometimes, not always, but it's still going to be a, it's going to be a challenge. That's for sure. And I'm not looking forward to all the publicity on the spots that the elites are going to bring on, on the final day, of course, but that's part of it. Those spots get trashed for a year or so and people forget. And then, they they load up again, but I think it's it's going to be interesting with uh with all the coverage with live and stuff like that. Did you guys have a live coverage or no? No, I thought that I was something the, the opens for, already all, always did on the final day was a live coverage. I think they are doing live, and I'm not sure. Definitely, I am not the best source for this, but I think they're doing live on like the last day or maybe all of the tournaments for like the last three in the season. Oh, because, okay. uh, you know, it's like a year long points thing now. Yeah. And, you know, the emphasis is on that uh, for the EQs. So mm -hmm. I, I think there's going to be some live, but I, I think historically they kind of just run them like a normal tournament until like you get in sort of a special situation. Sure. Yep. Yep. I got it. Man, I'm trying to respond to some of these comments, guys, and I'm. It says having trouble connecting. Please check your internet connection. Yet you guys can still hear me. I think we're okay. Um, cool. Well, Jody, we appreciate you coming on. JP, you got anything else? I just want to say that's one impressive win, and yeah. uh, it's something to be really proud of. And I would ride that coattail as long as possible <laughs> because you know they're so hard to come by, and uh, you know you should really enjoy it. And it couldn't have happened to a nicer guy. You know. Uh, met Jody a couple of seasons ago at a, uh, at a, at a tournament that he won and he was headed to Oneida for another tournament. And we just got chit chatting or whatever. And we've actually became like really good friends since then. And it was just awesome to see somebody that I personally know win, uh, and win at that magnitude against that, that field. You know what I mean? It was pretty, pretty, um, pretty good moment. Heck yeah. From a spectator also, you know, it was just great. I was, I was really happy. I drove up there to watch the, uh, the way, and it was, it was special. So congratulations to you. Well, thanks JP. And thanks <clears throat> Travis for having me on. It was uh, yeah. really special for sure. Awesome. So <laughs> how can people, uh, how can people follow you on social media and kind of keep up with what you're doing? What's the best way? Uh, Instagram is probably the main deal. And uh, it's just Jody Blanco. Uh, B L A N C O, uh, just like uh, well, it's like white in Spanish. <laughs> there you go. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much the main deal. And then you know, actually, I write a decent amount of stuff over at MajorLeagueFishing.com. And so, if you want to read stuff that I write, it's a good place to be. Very good, absolutely. We encourage you guys to check that out. We got to pick a quick winner. Uh, already did that. Looks like Lucky D, Lucky D, if you're listening. You won the prize package tonight. So if you have Instagram, you can send me a message or Travis at smallmouthcrush.com. Send me an email with your address and we will uh, get that prize pack out to you. JP, we got a fish tomorrow. Yeah. Same spot we were talking about earlier. Is that where we're meeting in the morning? Yep. All right. I'll be there. We'll do it all over again. <laughs> hey. Until hey, next time. Man. Every day. See you guys on the water. We'll talk to you guys water. next week. Thanks, Jody. Bye, everyone. Later, Travis. Right. See Bye. you guys.
cool. I think we're done. There we go.